everybody so this is my last video about my permanent resident application and first of all I'd like to apologize for the five months it passed since my previous video back in November 2014 uh, when I got my uh, open work permit and my letter of pre-approval uh, but I, I couldn't make any more videos until I had the final decision uh, from Citizenship and Immigration Canada about my PR application. So, great news! My permanent resident application was approved. Yay! I'm a permanent resident now for almost two months actually. I'm recording this in April and I became permanent resident in February 23. Uh, I'd like to tell you all about uh, what happened and all these last steps in order for me to become a permanent resident. So, uh, in February, I received an email from Citizenship Immigration Canada. I have the email right here. Okay. Uh, about my landing appointment. They schedule uh, a landing appointment when uh, both me and my sponsor had to be there, and ask some questions, and meet the immigration lawyer face to face, and then the final decision about my PR application would be be done there. Uh, so this letter has my UCI number, my application number, all works. So and it says your final determination interview has been scheduled at the above address on February 23, 2015, from 9 to 10 a.m. Please be prepared to wait up to two and a half hours as interviews are conducted in order of arrival. And it's so true. Uh, apparently, there was lots of other people. They were also scheduled from on that day from 9 to 10 a.m. When I got there, when me and my spouse got there, uh, there was a huge lineup of people trying to get in for the for the landing interviews, uh, either from the same category, family class, or other categories. Been people who got from residents uh, by being sponsored from your uh, employers, uh, and also there were people there as well uh, to do their citizenship tests. So lots of it will, yeah. And a long time waiting just to get to the check-in area. Um, it says is please present this letter upon your arrival. So it's very important to take the, the letter you receive uh, with you. All in Canada family members included in the application must be present for landing appointments. This includes the sponsor. Uh, if I had children, which I don't, uh, the children would also have to be there. Um, uh, second page, they put this on hold, really important. Uh, if you are a sponsor, please ensure that your sponsor attends the interview with you, as there may be a requirement to question them. Please note that you will not be able to proceed with the interview if your sponsor is not present. Uh, hmm? Also, they say if you believe that you require the service of an interpreter, you are responsible for hiring or finding an interpreter and ensuring that they attend the interview with you. I personally don't need an interpreter, but uh, people uh, who, who do need, uh, they have to write to have an interpreter there, but uh, CIC is not responsible for finding an interpreter uh, for you, will not provide one, you need to hire and find an interpreter at your own expense. Um, also, uh, they, they write here a small list about documents to take with you with the interview, besides the, the letter, of course. So, valid passport, uh, two photographs, and they, on the third page, they, they put the, the specifications uh, of the, the photographs. They actually measure them uh, to see if, if it's with this. This description is specifications, so it's really important to take this seriously. Um, in the receipts, uh, when I uh, sent all the paperwork, I had to pay. Um, both me and the sponsor paid all the fees of the application. We also paid the right of permanent residence fee, which is landing fee, which is four hundred ninety dollars, uh, on top of all the other fees at the time. So I took the receipts with me to the the signing appointments. So you can see that that the $109 the right of permanent residence fee 
uh, is already paid, already take care of that. Um, also, uh, it's really important for the sponsor and all the family members to take their ID with them because they're gonna check. The immigration officer is gonna check that. Anyway, uh, if you haven't paid the right to permanent residence fee as well, you, c you have to do that before the, before the interview. So uh, they put here the link of the CIC uh, where you need to pay and all that. So uh, they sent me that letter on February, 20, February 11, 2015, uh, and the interview was uh, for February 23, so they give enough time in advance for you to uh, sort things out uh, about finding interpreter if it's if you need one or uh, find or sorting things out with your work or your spouse's work. Uh, luckily for me and my uh, and I'm really thankful to my employer. Uh, they were really nice. They were really understanding about this, uh, and they. They gave me the day off. I took the letter, I explained the situation, they had no problems of me on me taking that day off. So I don't I have to worry uh, being there waiting to be called and oh I'm gonna get late for work or something. No, uh, I took the day off so one less worry for me and that, that was great. Uh, so, uh, as I told, uh, there was a, as I said before, there was a huge lineup uh, just to get the check-in area uh, and when I said when I got to check-in area present all the documents I had to present my passport uh, to present the slider I received the photographs the receipts uh, to prove that I pay all the fees including the right to put a residence fee um, my spouse also had to present the, the ID card the professional ID card um, and this is that we were told to wait. Uh, I don't remember how long we wait. It was like one hour and a half or two hours at least. Uh, it was a very long time until our name got called. Lots of people were in front of us. But once inside the that little office, my office when we met the um, immigration officer was uh, quite fast. It was like five minutes. Uh, Actually, I had imagined that uh, an immigration interview, special for the family sponsorship and spouse or common law partner sponsorship, that they would, I would imagine they would make long questions, spend a long time digging about our marital life. Uh, was, that, was that actually just three questions? I actually uh, have them here because this is the paper they gave me. It's called Confirmation of Permanent Residence. Um, yeah, the, the questions I had to um, answer, um, yeah, the three questions I had to answer are here, and I had to also to, to put my initials on it and everything. Um, so this, it's a beautiful document. It's a big one, actually. Uh, more than a A4, um, more than an A4 page. So this is what proves to uh, anyone if I want to get a job, they want to prove my that I'm a permanent resident. I have to present this document until at least I receive my permanent resident card. By the way, I'm still waiting for my permanent resident card. Uh, as I said, I'm recording this in April and I became permanent resident in February, the end, the end of February. And so it passed two months and I'm still waiting for my permanent resident card. Uh, as far as my understanding goes, uh, they're gonna mail me to me my permanent resident card. That's why they need the photographs, because they need one for the file and they need one for the card. Uh, so I'm still waiting. Probably have to, I don't know if I have to contact them and about that because it passed two months. But anyway, I'm actually still waiting for my PR card. Anyway, in the meantime, I have this beautiful document that I received my landing document. That's what they call it confirmation of permanent residence. So it has my uh, information, of course, my date of birth, name, sex, citizenship. They have those barcodes here. Uh, 
plot my UCI number, my application number, and the, the number of this document itself. And of course, I have my personal details, marital status, height, place of birth, country of birth, eye color, country of residence, original entry date into Canada, last entry date, last and the, the place, the, the entry that where my last entry in Canada was. And I think I love on this document, uh, they have the information became PR at, and there's the city, and I'll speak in PR on. And then there's the the dates, the on February twenty three. Um, yeah, now the application details that um, and conditions. And there's just the, the those questions. Uh, as I um, since twenty twelve, that's people who apply for permanent presence under the family sponsorship. And if the, the spouses, at the time of the application, were uh, married for less than two years and have no children in common, uh, the people, person getting the sponsorship, the permanent through sponsorship, um, gets a conditional permanent residence, which means that I have to leave my sponsor and um, if I move out or if I divorce my sponsor, um, my permanent resident status can be taken away. Um, I could lose my permanent resident status. Of course, they, they make exceptions of that. Uh, they specifically say that they're not tolerant to use. So if I'm in a business relationship, I don't have to be with my sponsor and all that. So it all works. So, uh, I'm not going to divorce, I'm not going to move out, I'm happily married. I uh, married two and a half years ago. Uh, I'm still, you know, I'm living with my sponsor, I'm happily married. So, uh, but I understand the CIC's uh, worries of, and why they made this law in 2012 to prevent uh, fraudulent marriages and stuff. Um, but that's it. And they actually sent me, uh, they also, when they gave me this, uh, this paperwork, my landing document, they also gave a letter explaining what conditional permanent presence means. Uh, I believe I have it here. Yes. I believe this letter right here. Explaining that um, same application received by CIC under the spouse or common partner class received after on or after October 25th, 2012 uh, are um, subject to peer conditional permanent residence if the spouse at the time of the application uh, uh, they had a relationship for less two years or less or had, and had no children in common with the sponsor at the time of the application. Okay. Uh, for instance, me and my spouse were married for almost one year when we sent the paperwork that's why I have conditional permanent residence, that's why this applies to me. In the meantime, it passed one year and a half since uh, sending the paperwork until now, so two, in a, two years and a half of marriage, uh, but I still have uh, this conditional permanent residence. Like I said, it's fine by me because um, I'm in a genuine marriage, so I don't intend to divorce, I don't intend to move out or anything like that, so I'm fine. Uh, they just have this preventive measure, which is totally fine by me. Uh, of course, they put here the exceptions that uh, you do not have to stay in the relationship with the sponsor to keep your status in Canada if you are living in a situation of abuse and neglect and all that. Um, okay. They also have on the second page, uh, if you're a victim of abuse or neglect, um, you know what to do in a cognate one one, and there's victim services directory and all that to um, to uh, uh, deal with situations like that, which is not my case, so I'm fine with it. So um, I got permanent presence and for the next two years I have this conditional permanent presence and after two years uh, my permanent presence uh, 
it's no longer conditional. So, uh, I think that is everything. Uh, like I said, I'm still waiting for my prom driving card. Uh, I'll make sure I'll make another video when I get it. Uh, I like to 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 share that with you. And uh, I know there's people who are passing through the same situation, through the same uh, immigration process. Uh, who watch my videos. I noticed that through the, the wonderful comments I received on my previous videos. And uh, to those of you who are still waiting to for the for the application to be processed, to receive the final answer, the decision, now now that I'll just go the best for you. And I really, really hope my videos help you to uh, understand the process, the the steps, the, the forms, and what happens after sending the paperwork and how long you usually have to wait and, and I really hope that your application will be as successful as mine was and because becoming a permanent resident is really really great yes before I became a permanent resident I, I was in the t under the temporary foreign worker program I had a, a work permit um, and no longer having to worry about it and having be able to study be able to work whenever I want not only to the employer that was on my work permit and in the stability of being able to stay in Canada uh, it's so amazing I have on my workplace um, another person who is still a temporary foreign worker and, and whose work permit expires uh, this year and, and knowing that she probably have to go home to her own country in the Philippines um, when her work permit expires, unless my employer applies for permanent presence um, and sponsors her to for permanent presence. Uh, it's really sad, right? To see, and I know that for experience because I already had a couple of, of co workers of mine who work here in Canada under the Temporary Foreign Worker program and those visa expired and uh, they had to return home so having that past having that past over me having the stability of becoming permanent resident and knowing that I'm allowed to stay in Canada and, and even four years from now, after, four years after I became a permanent resident, I can even apply for Canadian citizenship if I want to. Um, which, by the way, uh, my own country, Portugal and Canada, have a dual citizenship agreement, which means that if I wanted to become a Canadian citizen, I would need to renounce my Portuguese citizenship. I could have both if I wanted. But of course, it's way too early uh, to think about citizenship. For now, uh, I'm still enjoying my uh, permanent present status, which is great. And uh, like I said, I hope uh, my videos help you. And I know it's a long process. It took me <coughs> so what that a little sick lately with a change of temperature and everything. So like I was saying. Uh, it took me one year and a half since I signed the paperwork until I got called to this uh, lending interview and uh, and I became a permanent resident with my lending document and now waiting for the PR card. Uh, it's a long process and it's, uh, it's worth it. The only downside is that uh, Applications within Canada, like me, 
uh, if the application gets refused, you don't have the chance to uh, appeal it. But if you apply for permanent residence uh, from outside Canada under the family class, uh, by the way, under the family class and the sponsor common partner sponsorship class, if you apply from outside Canada, uh, and if your application gets refused for whatever reason, uh, you have the right and you're given the chance to appeal the decision. Uh, I don't know exactly how that works because I didn't pass through that situation. My application was within Canada and my application got approved, what, uh, fortunately for me. So uh, you need, if you're in that situation, unfortunately, you have to, um, to search more about it on the CIC and now you could appeal it and stuff. But um, in that sense, I hope my um, my videos help you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I will uh, answer to the best of my ability. I would like to clarify that I'm not an immigration consultant or immigration lawyer or anything like that. So I don't have any financial benefit in making these videos whatsoever. Uh, just a person who passed through this immigration process to become permanent residence uh, from temporary foreign worker until permanent residence and um, I'm just like to make these videos to help people that are in the same situation as me uh, the same way I would like to have those videos uh, when I started my application in 2013 anyway but um, I'm not an expert, like I said, uh, an immigration consultant, an immigration lawyer, so, but I'll do my best to answer your questions to the best of my ability. And uh, I'm out there. Uh, if you already sent your application, please be prepared to wait. It's a long time. Uh, this backlogs uh, in paperwork, uh, which are kind of understandable if you think about it because they have to be thorough from the point of view of the government is understandable because they have to be thorough with the people they bring to Canada in terms of security, um, national security. Uh, but at the same time, it's tough having to wait so long and having the fear of the application being fused or or getting poor or something and. stuff but uh, in this case of success my application was approved uh, the first try I didn't have to start application over again or anything uh, mainly because uh, I sent a thorough application a complete application I still remember uh, when I sent when I sent the, all the paperwork uh, with the six pounds I remember that it was it was stuck in my head <laughs> but uh, they waited it was six pounds of paperwork uh, and I spent one month focused 100% on the application of the forms of paperwork on research and everything and all the additional document supporting documents that my marriage is real is genuine and uh, and pay off because one year and a half later I'm a permanent resident and it's a great feeling so like I said any questions any comments please uh, feel free to, uh, to answer below um, and see you next time